There are many different return types that you can associate with your methods on your MVC controller. As you can see, they all inherit from the controller class that is utilized inside of the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC namespace. If I come up to my first action right here, I can say this dot. I can look at all of the return types associated inside of the index method that the home controller is inheriting from. If you take off the controller class that's being inherited from your home controller, you do not have access to all of these different types. So as you can see right here, we can return content. We can return based off the HTTP context. There's a lot of different items that you can return from based on inheriting from the controller class. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. As we've implemented before, we have this ID route method on our home controller class. And I can come right here and instead of putting a string, I can put a content result right here. And then instead, I can come down here and I can return content. And this is going to give me essentially the same thing as I did before with returning a string. This is a return type that you can associate directly on the controller itself. And in this case, we put content result right there to associate the type we want to return. And we're returning a string content right here. So instead of qualifying it with the string type, we can return a content result to associate with that. So this is one of the ways you can return content back to your views inside of your MVC controller. Now let's go ahead and associate an object return type. So let's go down here and we can type public object result. And we're just going to name it my object. And by default, you're going to return an object type that's going to be associated with JSON. So in this case, if you want to create a model and then associate a consumptions of an endpoint, you can pass that to your object result and then implement that and send it back to the browser. Now, when we delve into Web API, this is what we'll be utilizing in some cases to return back JSON or XML to our consumption point, whether it be in a separate application or in this application, to use that data for whatever CRUD operation we want to implement. So right there, let's return new and then we'll put object result. We'll pass the data that we want to associate in our object result once we implement that. I'm going to create a simple class and pass data to our object result and show you how it returns to the browser. So I'm going to go to my models folder right here. I'm going to click add class and the class I'm going to say is my data just for test. And then inside of my data, I'm just going to create two properties. So I'm going to say prop tab tab and I'm going to make this my ID and then I'm going to say prop tab tab and I'm going to make this a string and I'm going to say my value. So right there I have two properties to associate with my data class. Then I'm going to come to my home controller and I'm just going to create a simple model structure. So I'm going to say var my model equals new and it's going to be my data you're going to see the little squiggly red line that's going to associate with an error because we don't have this namespace associated inside of our home controller so we're going to put course project dot models once we do that now let's come in here and let's associate some data with those items so my id i'm just going to give it a value of one and then i'm going to associate my value and give it a name. Let's just say my first value. And once I have that, let's pass my model to the object result. And right there, you'll see the error go away. And now what we can do is we can run in our browser right here. Let's click view in browser. It's going to take us to our default route. And we're going to see this implemented right here. Give it a second. It's going to go to our default route right there. Then what we're going to do, we're going to go to home. And then we're going to come to my object. And you're going to see this return as JSON data. So look what it's returning. You have my ID one and my value, my first value. This is the object result return type inside of MVC. 
And the only way you can implement this is if you're utilizing the ASP.NET Core MVC namespace and you're inheriting from the controller class on that namespace. So now if you didn't want to inherit from the object result, you can also return JSON directly. So we can say JSON result and then we can say JSON. And right there, if we do that and we go down to here, refresh this, you're going to get the same results. Give it a second while it loads. You see right there that I can come in here and just change this. Come down here to this. You can see it dynamically change on the page. And says my first. So there's many different return types that you can associate inside of your MVC controllers. We've looked at a few associated with the content result, the object result, and JSON result. So in this case, you can always come up to your controller types and then just start typing with IntelliSense to see the different result types that you can utilize inside of your MVC controller methods. And then you can emit those back into your views to associate the different result types that you want inside of the method on your controller. So this is how we implement different return types on our MVC controller methods.